Hi folks, uh, this is Yetmir uh, with uh, another uh, video here. Uh, today with me uh, is Nathan Watson from Western Australia. Very happy to have him with me today here. Essentially, um, uh, we recently started a new journey with wildlife uh, world photographers as a way to connect with other photographers, share our passion, uh, promote uh, habitats and wildlife conservations as well. So uh, welcome, Nathan. It's great to have you with us. So, uh, we have agreed uh, with, Nathan, uh, uh, with Nathan that we'll uh, start uh, the conversation uh, by sharing the pictures. But first, uh, tell us, Nathan, a little bit about you, a little bit about the photography and maybe the achievement, wherever you choose that. Yeah, thanks, Yetmir, and and thank you for uh, for inviting me onto your uh, your channel and and your show. Uh, very honoured to chat to you about my photography. So, uh, I've been um, photographing uh, birds. Uh, that's my passion um, for the last two two and a half years. Uh, so not a long time, but uh, had uh, you know a really enjoyable uh, time learning that uh, that craft. I've had a love of photography for a long time, really, um, having worked in the media uh, industry for uh, 15 years and working very closely with professional press photographers. So really developed a keen interest in photography. But, you know, other than uh, taking some family snaps and pet snaps and those sorts of things, never really did it seriously. So um, I moved to Albany um, on the south coast of Western Australia about 12 years ago, nearly 12 years yeah. ago. Um, and it's just a, just so many diverse habitats here. It's just a, a, an amazing part of the world, just a beautiful place to live and uh, such a diversity of bird life too. And I've been following uh, a few um, prominent uh, wildlife photographers and bird photographers and Georgina Statler being one who you may have uh, heard of. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was her work that really inspired me to uh, buy my first professional uh, camera body and, and, a, and a birding lens, so to speak, and, and have a go at doing this myself. And she's been a fantastic inspiration and encouragement for me, along with um, Shelley Pearson in Perth, particularly. Um, and I joined a group here in Australia called uh, BirdLife uh, Australia Photography, and it's a little uh, branch of BirdLife Australia. Um, but that's been a really uh, fantastic group for really nurturing um, beginning photographers and helping them develop their uh, their crafts. So I owe that group a lot too for encouraging me and, and giving me uh, a, a lot of guidance. And um, and uh, it's been been good. Yeah, really enjoy it. it. It's become a passion very very quickly. And uh, I'm a bit of an obsessive person. Personality. So when I when I uh, put my focus on something and I become passionate about something, I'm I'm 100 percent, 110 percent in. Really, um, I've got to try and do it to the absolute best of my ability. That's fantastic, and I, I guess we'll hear more. We get to know you more by uh, sharing the pictures. I ask you to send me a few pictures you have. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, share. Uh, the screen share those pictures and then we'll go we'll take a journey through your photography yeah uh, sure look forward to it okay so here is a cool coot <laughs> it is yeah this is a, a eurasian coot and and i included this one because um i recently transitioned to a mirrorless um a mirrorless camera so i've purchased the canon uh, r3 which is quite a, a recent um Mm. recent release and uh, this was my my first uh, field trip with that particular camera and uh, this is a location that I go to um, fairly frequently it's a it's a pond that's really um, a great spot for waterfowl and um, and I really enjoy photographing water birds and shore birds they're they're probably my favorites to work with um, and uh, this was quite late in the morning, but the way the light um, was coming across the trees on the far bank, I had some light and shadows to work with. And my style of photography is really to try and uh, work with light as, as much as I can. But I just really like the action of this particular um, image and the, the uh, eye tracking autofocus system of the new R3 just blew me away with the way it locked onto the eye of this bird with all that water splash around it. It stayed stuck on the eye, and um, yeah, look, this this image um, uh, obviously 
obviously being the first good shot that I'd taken with that new um, new mirrorless technology, but just really like the wing placement and the way the light is coming from sort of the, the rear side and uh, really highlighting that bright red eye on the coot as well. So just the combination of shadows and light on this, I thought worked really well. And I like I like the, how you work with light as we see the other pictures, the so low key and high key lights. It's, it's very, it's something that you play with a lot. So I really enjoy it. So let's uh, see another image. Yeah. Nice yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is, um, I really like the symmetry in this shot. And uh, this was taken uh, last weekend, actually. So very recent image. Uh, and again, it's at the same pond as that Eurasian um, coot was taken. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned most in, um, you know, my photography journey is that while patience is really uh, important in photography and you can go to a location and you know you spend you, you, you've got to put in the hours to to get the good shots persistence is equally if not more important so that's coming back for repeat visits because you get to know the species that are there you get to know their behaviors you start to observe the light and how that location changes conditions at different times of the day or in with different weather events on uh, last weekend, we had a thunderstorm come through and I was watching the forecast very closely because often late in the day here when a thunderstorm comes through, the clouds break at sunset and you get these really rich colours coming through in the sunset because there's a bit of cloud around. And um, looking at the forecast, it was predicted to break about an hour before sunset. So I planned to head to this location for an hour that evening, knowing that I would get some amazing light. Mm -hmm. And luckily, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and these uh, these Australian wood ducks, they're two females actually, um, was one of the images I captured. And uh, I just really liked the warm tones that came through in this image um, and that beautiful, you know, yellowish orange uh, backlight uh, on the ducks and just that symmetry, um, their pose as they come together. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was pretty happy with this one. Very nice. Uh, by the way, are you? I mean, I like the point of view. Are you shooting from a floating height, or are you? Are you very like? How are you achieving this very nice POV? Yeah. So look, I'm really low. I don't have a floating height. I, I would love to have one, but it's uh, it's not something that I have at the moment. So um, it's a difficult location to work this one because there's limited there's limited places where you can get this low. But there is one spot on the bank where and there's a, this sort of large. Uh, there's a large fern, um, sort of a fern. And uh, so it's quite muddy and quite low. So I'm sort of partially submerged here, but I've tucked myself in under that plant that's growing on the edge to try and give myself some cover. And I'm actually shooting out from underneath uh, a leaf, this giant broad leaf that's hanging over my head. <laughs> um, it's plain in there. But, but getting, getting a low perspective, I mean, getting eye level is what... Um, is really important it's it's and and you know i'm not afraid to to get a bit wet or a bit muddy to get that perspective it's worth it i mean when you see the picture it's really nice it's really yeah. does, does make a difference no thank you oh that's uh, everything it's working amazingly here and this is a black and white approach it is and and i do enjoy black and white and and i think that goes back to my media days yet mia so when i first um got into the business of newspapers as a journalist and and this was this was back in uh, 1999 2000 around then it was still black and white publication in newspaper print so i think that really helped me develop uh, uh, you know an appreciation for black and white photography so i i certainly look for opportunities to convert um, my images to black and white and uh, sometimes i think that's more effective than color and occasionally I'll head out into the field and I'll set my camera body to monochrome and shoot in black and white, depending on the conditions. Um, but this was one, uh, again, where I was laying on uh, on the edge of this uh, large pond on the beach and uh, just spent the morning watching these yellow-billed uh, spoonbills. Uh, and as this one approached, I was able to lock onto it and, and track him in as he landed and just caught him in this beautiful side light again and uh and just an amazing wing pose uh and it converted to black and white really well um the color version of this was 
were shortlisted in the BirdLife Photography Awards a couple of years ago, but um, the, the colour version is really nice as well, but I, I prefer it in black and white. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. Very nice. And you also won an award. You'll, uh, you'll tell us maybe, I think you, I hope you included the image here. Too. I did, yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. So, ah, okay, that's very nice. A lot more environment openness of this. Very nice. Yeah, uh, the, the minimalist feel of this, and, and obviously there's a, it was a very serene morning, and I think that really comes through on, the, on this particular image. Uh, it's a great egret that's coming into land um, on the shallows of the harbour, and it's, it's quite misty. And I just love the way the birds touch down and hardly cause a ripple in the water, like it's just touched down so delicately. Um, and again, it's just this really nice soft light. It's very early in the morning, so it's just as first light's breaking over the horizon. Um, and I've gone with a higher key um, exposure um, and uh, to really soften everything. Um, and it's just got this really nice serene feel about this image. So it's, it's one of my favourites from the images that I took, um, took last year. Uh, yeah, just re really like this one. Um, and I think that small in frame, that small in frame approach is, is it's a favourite style of mine, but certainly one that I haven't perfected. I think it's one of the more challenging compositions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can think of people who do it very well, like Ray Hennessy over there in the United States. Like you know, he he does amazing uh, small in frame compositions. I think this one. And when you go small in frame, you're obviously challenged with with trying to fit a lot more into the picture. And mm -hmm. um, but this one, this one was relatively easy because there just wasn't any any distraction. So um, that small in frame approach really worked. Two unique approaches to uh, to photography that that I have personally a lot of interest is also the intimate shots when you get the, the intimate moments of the subject. Uh, but also you have this other approach, which is you include environment and it's such an atmospheric approach. And you just, I mean, you can get enough on the picture. I love, you mentioned Ray, he's very, he's, he's very talented at that. I, I love it, what he, uh, the way he works it. And actually he just posted an image of a duck. I was gonna, I was gonna question and the duck was so small in the frame. I appreciated this, I, I appreciate his vision and style, but I was going to ask him, uh, where is the bird here? Uh, meaning, uh, it's he does it so right at the same time. He just, you know, it just it just takes you. So it's I think this is a nice approach to that as well. Um, sorry, yeah. just for that comment, but I think it's it's it, it it really means to folks on also where to focus. Like where do they feel more engaged with, and it's. It's very nice. You're, you're absolutely right, and 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 Ray is uh, is supremely talented, and uh, and has been a, 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 a you know I admire his work, and and uh, but I think yeah, that comment about you know that smaller in frame approach captures a lot more atmosphere, and you're, and 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 it does. You know, um, there's some intimacy with uh, with getting close ups, but I think capturing that atmosphere has, uh, you know, can create a really powerful connection to an image as well. And it can tell a, a really strong story, but it tells you more about the scene um, and uh, and more about the habitat in, on, in, in many ways as well. So um, this one's quite a simple one, but, but I thought it was really effective. Absolutely, and I love it. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, the backlighting also, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this is one that was captured in our garden and uh, my wife has a has an amazing garden and uh, we get lots of uh, our, you know, garden bird species. Uh, so plenty of opportunities to photograph them. And I took this one, we just had our, um, our baby boy. So I was, uh, I couldn't go out in the field. And uh, so I had six weeks at, uh, you know, around the house supporting my wife and, and looking after uh, little Henry, we named him actually, and, and he's about four months old now, but um, I had plenty of time to, uh, in the evening, to spend some time working with light in our garden, and this was one of the shots that I got. 
Um, and again, I've gone for a smaller in frame, sort of wider uh, composition to get a little bit more of that garden habitat. And on the left there, you've got the backlit um, rose stem. It's a new rose stem. Um, and this little silver eye that's come in and perched on a lilac branch. Um, and I'm actually shooting through some foliage in the foreground, which is what's created that really nice, um, you know, multicolored um, bouquet uh, in the foreground. Um, and uh, yeah, look, it's, um, it's, it was really fun playing with light on this evening. I, I got a number of shots that I was really happy with, but this one just, that little extra bit of environment in it, I, I just like that touch. Um, some people might find that rose branch uh, a bit distracting, but I thought it balanced the image quite mm -hmm. well because the, the, the bouquet is confined to the right-hand side of the frame. And in a way it frames that little backlit bird and then, you know, bringing that um, foliage element into the left really balanced the composition, I thought. Yeah, it's very cool. Like, I, I remember you just brought to my, uh, uh, to my memory, we had an interview with Shannon Wilde, and she, she mentioned, a ter she said a term, into, uh, intuitive composition. Intuitive composition, sometimes they're are rules but there and then there is something more to it like for example in this image everything is working together as an orchestra almost uh, there is a harmony to this and I, you must have felt it must have felt right to you you know to 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 come about and then and then bring this and then bring this together it's it's very nice Absolutely. I think, you know, there's, there's a saying and, and Georgina quotes this, Georgina Stateler quotes this regularly, learn the rules like a pro, break them like an artist. Mm. And I think that that's so true. You know, when you're taking an artistic approach to photography, you've got to understand what makes a good photograph and you've got to work with those um, techniques and those elements that make the photograph, uh, you know, strong. Uh, but you know you're you're the artist, and and I think you know taking a different approach to it um, is what uh, is what makes it different. And that intuitive composition is a really good term for it because the composition has to feel right. Um, mm. You know, just because, for instance, the rule of thirds, and 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 that's something that you see in a lot of my images. I use the rule of thirds, but sometimes it just doesn't feel right on a rule of thirds, for instance. You know, so. Um, you place it where it feels right. It feels right. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Like, for example, <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, this this was a very serendipitous uh, um, moment, really, and it happened. Uh, and, and again, this is in our garden. Um, this is one of the the uh, native trees, uh, eucalyptus trees that we've got, and this is the one that won uh, won the Backyard Birds category in the BirdLife Australia Photography Awards last year, which was just a, a real thrill. Um, yeah. And it's a little splendid fairy wren um, female. And I had been in the garden, uh, again, working with the sunset, just trying to backlight a few different species. And I hadn't had much luck. And um, my wife was out in the garden with me. And I went to come inside. And the moon was rising. Um, and it wasn't quite a full moon, but it was pretty close. And she looked up in the tree and there were some splendid fairy wrens and she says, oh, look, some wrens. Um, and I turned around and I thought they're just at the right angle for me to get one silhouetted in this moon. And uh, it all happened very quickly as these things do. So um, I sort of got in position and I was willing this little uh, female to jump along the branch and within a couple of seconds she did and she posed right in the middle of the moon. Um, and uh, this is the shot that happened. And, uh, you know, it's a blue hour shot. Uh, and I just love that little bit of foliage. And if you look very carefully up in the right hand corner, you can see it's little mate uh, hiding there in the leaves as well. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, most people don't notice that until you until you point it out because it blends in so well with the foliage. But um, and it's and, and these little wrens, they're tiny little birds um, and uh, very brightly coloured, although the females are a bit duller, but this is a very, very typical uh, pose for a wren. So that was something that I quite like too. Like it's, you don't need to see the colour of the bird to know what bird it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well-deserved award, beautiful shot, very thought of and everything on you know, all aspects. Just hit the jackpot here. Very nice. Thank you.
Ah, uh, here's an osprey, favorite raptor. Beautiful, what a moment. That's a unique, intimate moment. <laughs> It is. And uh, yes, you're right. They are beautiful raptors and we've got quite a lot of them um, here, obviously living on the coast. And uh, I've been lucky to, um, you know, over the last few years, get to know their their habits and the times of day that they fish. And this was probably the most intimate moment that I have had with an osprey so far. Uh, this female had uh, caught a fish and landed on this branch and allowed me to um, walk into a position where I could get a quite a, a close-up detailed image and she just kept eating her fish un, uh, unperturbed and uh, that's really important to me too like I don't like to disturb um, wildlife so I always take great care with the birds and that when I'm photographing them and I was very careful approaching this female to make sure she wasn't uncomfortable with me but I'm actually standing behind a tree. Um, so that helped. Um, she didn't feel threatened in any way. And I've used the tree's foliage in the foreground. And that's why it's got this really sort of soft effect mm -hmm. um, that's almost framing her because I'm shooting through the foliage. Um, and uh, the light, uh, unfortunately, the light wasn't quite ideal. So the colors didn't quite work for me as much as I liked the um, as much as I liked the image, um, there was a blue sky, there was green foliage in the foreground. Um, the bird was white and the fish was gray with some red blood and those sorts of things. And it looks nice in color, but it's not as powerful as it is in black and white. The conversion works really, really well on this. Um, yeah, one of my favorite shots. And I just love that moment I've captured where she's tearing some flesh off the fish. Um, and her eye is looking straight at me. I've seen lots of photos of this. Mark Smith is one of the top photographers for Austria. Brilliant. But Brilliant. this very moment, <laughs> it's so unique. Uh, I never seen myself either. Like that, that, that very second of you know what you know that uh, that uh, that behavior that, and it's 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 quite impactful. That's wonderful. It, it is. And I think that, you know, they've got such powerful beaks and that's mm. that's the story that it, this image tells. It's all, all about that beak and how she's using that beak. And you can see her her tongue in the image and um, the hook on the on the upper bill. And it's just, um, it really grabs you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, another minimalist approach um, and again you know this is this is just that artistic um, approach that I like to take with my photography and and I'm always looking for ways that I can use um, dead trees or branches to create an interesting composition and I thought this was one that worked really well uh, an overcast day so the natural instinct for me is on an overcast day is to look for um, opportunities for a high key composition mm -hmm. Um, and we had this white-faced heron um, sitting on this um, wonderfully old, um, you know, branch that's full of character with a bit of moss and twisted sticks and bits and pieces on it. And I've just composed it in a way that, you know, there's a lot of leading lines here that sort of are all pointing in the same direction. And uh, the composition, you know, you talk about feel for composition. This was just one that felt right. It, it just feels really just feels feels good to look at um you know there's probably nothing particularly special about it it's it's a quite a common bird but you know as an artistic um um sort of uh image uh, i think it works really well it's very nice and i think for most of the folks who will see this in our group this is not a common bird you know because yeah it, but it's so cool to, to get introduced to styles but also you a uh, new species, so it's very nice, very nice. And it, and, and that it brings just a touch of colour, which I think is nice too, you know, that little bit of red on the breast and the bluish grey of the feathers and a hint of yellow in the legs, because otherwise it's, it's, it's a very colourless scene, but it's just got that nice soft colour coming through on the bird, which works really well too. Absolutely. Here we have a high-key pelican shot. Yeah, yeah, very high-key and deliberate, deliberately um, overexposed this by, by uh, several stops. And again, it was an overcast day. I was down at the river bank and this, um, this, the pelicans are quite friendly. If you go down to the, uh, 
the estuary or, or down near the bridge not far from home here they think you're going to go fishing and and you know they hang around hoping for a bit of an easy meal but mm -hmm. unfortunately for this pelican i wasn't fishing i was <laughs> out there with my camera so he went hungry um but i was just thinking you know it was a it was a an overcast day the water was very gray um, and I just had this instinct to blow the whites out as far as I could and just retain a little bit of detail in the pelican and see how that, uh, that worked. And um, this, is, this is not far from what it um, was like when it came out of the camera. I've just added, I've um, pulled the curves, the shadows curves down a little bit to bring a bit of the detail back out in the feathers and on the beak. Um, but otherwise this was, um, this was as it was exposed in camera. So, and I just really like that. Again, it's that artistic approach that I enjoy with my photography. Um, and it's uh, it's a unique portrait. I think it, it's nice with a bit of color in it. Yeah. And I love that eye connection that you get with the subject in this case. It's very, uh, it just snatch you. You just, you cannot uh, take off the eyes from the eye. You know, it's very it's just there. And it's a nice uh, in uh, atmosphere of the entire shot that you just you just connect it naturally with it. I think that finding that balance is such a such a unique uh, I think uh, ability that photographers have. It's just how do you know that this works? But it does, and it, and it's amazing how folks have that. Yeah, and it, it it's difficult to describe too because it becomes so instinctive for us you know and and um but i think it's it's, it's getting that eye contact and and that connection is really important it's you know that's what that's what connects others to your your picture and and uh you know yeah this works it works well uh, it's 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 looking at me hoping that i'm going to throw it a fish uh, but i didn't <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here is another cool shot. Yeah, thanks, Yetmir. This is uh, this is another fairly recent um, recent image, and again, you know, working uh, with light in a in a creative way, mm. getting down very very low um, in the seaweed. So this is a location um, where at uh, low tide there's a bit of a sandbar that becomes exposed, mm. and um, there's it there's some seaweed that sits on the on the sand and um, I got there at uh, just before sunrise and, and into position um, and just got really low and used that seaweed as a foreground and a, and a background and obviously the that early sunlight coming through the seaweed has created these beautiful golden bokeh balls um, and I waited for the birds to to walk past in the right position and this little redneck stint came by and I've been able to frame him uh, with all that wonderful um, light and uh, it's just um, it's magical you know I really enjoy really enjoy playing with um, with bokeh I think when you can get the light right and you can get the effect right there's something really magical about it I really yeah. enjoy it and oftentimes uh, as we speak with friends or with other folks who don't photograph them um, I, I mentioned the fact that uh, folks may not realize the fact but this is a very spiritual experience as well you're connected with the nature with the light with the with the wildlife in a very uh, unique way and it's also a very nice activity a type of hobby in a sense for most of us you get to walk a little bit more it's very healthy in in in, in its entirety per se and it is there's nothing better than getting out in the early morning and seeing the world wake up. There's something that's really uh, calming about it. It's, it's, it's peaceful. It's a great, um, you know, it's a really good hobby for mental health, I think. And, and, you know, I work a fairly uh, pressured, busy uh, weekly job and, and just, you know, I look forward to the few hours that I get to go out on the weekend and, and you see the sunrise and, you're sort of a world away and you know you clear your, you clear your mind and you enjoy the moment and um you also get very wet and cold at times but it's worth it yeah. <laughs> there, I, I, I i'm i'm a strong believer that if you're not uncomfortable taking the photo you're probably not getting the best photo yeah i agree i absolutely agree that's a conversation we just recently had that the importance of waking up very early in the morning with some folks very early and then really 
sacrificing for that shot, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, is it? Okay. I was under impression there is another one, no? Yeah. I is can't it, remember, honestly. Yeah, well, the last one. This is the last one. Sorry. We just there you go. That's from conversating. So, you know, I just, and that's the beauty of this. Uh, interviews where we leave it open, we leave it casual, you just let the flow go. And then it's it really, I mean, this was so much information going on. So uh, it's so good to uh, have uh, these talks because you learn so much about your photography by hearing others photography. And uh, this is, this is, this has been great. So I want to thank you so much for the time. It was uh, such pleasure. And uh, hopefully uh, in the future, we plan to uh, organize these talks where we are a couple of folks sharing experiences or uh, photographing unique species where we can all bring perspectives. And I think that that's not only sharing knowledge with others, but also meeting new friends. I think that what uh, what comes as importance to me that I found later on after photographing is that community engagement is just part of my passion now and why I like photographing so much also. And yeah, meeting folks like you, for example, and other amazing photographers around the world has been such a joy. So I thank you so much, uh, Nathan. Uh, you're very welcome, Yetmir. It's, it's been, a, been an honor and look, I hope some of those images inspire, inspire others too. And I agree the, the wildlife photography community is such a welcoming community, such a sharing community, you know, and I enjoy, uh, you know, watching similar sorts of videos and, and listening to podcasts of other photographers and you learn so much from other people's experiences and um, it's just wonderful to be able to, to, to share. It's such a sharing community um, and uh, really enjoyed it. So, and, and if you don't mind, if anyone would like to follow me, they can look up my Instagram handle, Nathan Watson Photography. Um, that's, that's my main account at the moment, if anyone would like to see more of my work. But Really appreciate the time and the and the, and the chat and and uh, the opportunity to share some of my photos with with some of your uh, community. Uh, thank you very much. Awesome. Have a nice day. All the best. You too, Yetmir. Thank you. Bye bye.